Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to get into an essential element in the alchemy of all this stuff, and that is the quality of raising the spirit. And this is something that permeates a, a lot of the literature and teachings of, of Taiji and related topics. And it's something which is, you know, the, the arrow points in that direction. In other words, the things are, all the stuff we're doing kind of moves in the direction of raising the spirit. So to clarify exactly what that means, uh, I'd like to you know, get into the, the that, and we're going to get into some stuff that may help with the, um, with that process. So for years, I kind of, you know, tried to get my, wrap my hand or my, my mind around the, uh, around the concept because I understood spirit as a, as a kind of a abstract quality, but I didn't know exactly what was meant in this context. What does it mean in, in Taiji to raise the spirit? So, you know, I've been doing a lot of writing about it recently and and like to uh, kind of share some of the insights that I've come across with that. And, you know, to start with like a simple definition of spirit, because there's like, you know, it goes all over the place and depending on the context that it's being used. But the, probably the most uh, general one, the one that pops up first on most definitions, it's it's the quality that animates living creatures. So the that which separates alive from dead. And so the uh, the uh, and has uh, an immaterial quality. So it's not matter. And so the uh, so that's that's the understanding that permeates a lot of the uh, you know uh, most of the definitions of it. Um, so you have a lot of different types of of spirit. You know, you talk about team spirit, or you talk about the Holy Spirit, and there's lots of different uses. But that one, we if we can kind of orient to that, a lot of the stuff makes sense that we talk about that. And as um, um, Miracle Max explained in The Princess Bride, that all dead is different from partly dead, mostly dead. And, and then he goes on to explain that, and if something is only mostly dead, then it means it's partly alive. And I think this uh, kind of really gets to the core of it there, because we're saying that there are there is a spectrum of aliveness that we have, and we have. It's not a binary thing, alive and dead. It's like, how alive are you? And this is where we get into when we talk about raising the spirit. It's like, how much aliveness, how much liveliness can you bring into the present moment? And that is what I believe is being discussed when we're talking about raising the spirit. That is where we are creating more aliveness and then we're raising it physically in the body so that it is felt in the brain. And uh, so this is fits in with uh, a lot of the Taoist literature and uh, you know the they talk about the Ni Wan Gong, which is the the muddy pill or mud pill palace. And that's the mud pill was was a nickname for the pineal gland. And the mud pill palace was the spot in the in the brain and the center of the brain, which included the pituitary gland and the pineal gland, and also the uh, uh, the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is the part of the brain that that is the interface between the nervous system and the endocrine system. So the pituitary gland is the master gland and it controls all the endocrines in the in the whole body. The pineal gland is primarily in charge with uh, with uh, regulating light and uh, issuing the the melatonin the um, uh, the hormone that governs our sleep cycle. 
and so we had this these things here. So the and the uh, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are part of what's called the um, HPA, the uh, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And the adrenals are very body, eye of flesh kind of kind of hormones, which are primarily the guardians of the system. They they are they are activate they activate the the stress response. They activate the the functions that protect us. Whereas the pituitary controls everything else and keeps the homeostasis of the whole system going. So the and the hypothalamus regulates the information that the nervous system feeds into this so that we can get this this axis. So that means that they these two poles are the pituitary and the uh, and the adrenals and they determine how much of it is uh, uh, a whole a holistic unified approach versus the determined uh, stress response kind of, of approach anyway so these this is happening right there in that that Niwon gong the the uh, mud pill palace so bringing up your chi to your brain, if you if it can pass through the jade pillow gate, and that's a, that's a big if because you know, as we've discussed often here, it's you know that if you're kinking the hose, then you get this the energy is not feeding into the brain, and since the brain is using about twenty percent of your resources, your chi, your blood, your oxygen every moment waking or sleeping then if you are kinking the hose there then you're starving the brain it doesn't have enough energy to function at a high level so one of the things that these these guys who were you know going back centuries they were able to observe that whenever you open the jade pillow gate whenever you feed the niwan gong that things work better. Not only that, but whenever the brain goes into a state of whole brain coherence, then you access awarenesses which are not available to you in your normal state. You start to have experiences that we would call spiritual experiences because we're moving outside of the just the survival parts of our, our awareness and into something which we're able to attune to the environment in a way that is extraordinary. That is, we are able to go beyond the limitations of our five senses and our rational thinking and open up into something much, much bigger. And this is what I've referred to many times in these talks about the eye of spirit. That is, the, the perceptions, the awarenesses that are beyond the ordinary. And they range also on a spectrum, you know, from something very something very simple as uh, like just having a hunch or an intuition about something, just having a, a fe the sense of, uh, oh, there's someone else in the room or there's things like that where, where you're going, you're able to perceive something which is, you, you shouldn't, have that sense you know that and then going all the way to the end of the spectrum where you're having moments of you know cosmic consciousness and and uh and full-blown mystical experiences and all local stops in between so in order to raise the the um raise the spirit to allow the chi to ascend in your body, moving up through the jade pillow gate and into your brain, into the that central control panel that you've got there in your brain. It, we, there's a, an important formula that is that it's written about and not talked about too much, but uh, it's, it, 
the the Chinese for it is Shuling Ding Jin, and um, I'll uh, I'll write it in the in the notes to the uh, to the 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 tape on video on on YouTube. But Shu Ling Ding Jin roughly translates, and there's lots of different translations for it. But roughly translates, if you get your head and your neck in the correct position, the spirit will and the spiritual energy will ascend. And that's you know that's a real kind of uh, bare bones kind of explanation for it. But another way of saying it is that there is a an insubstantial energy that lifts the crown of the head and allows the uh, allows the spirit to rise so that's another way of talking about it and so we're getting a a, a message here that is really crucial particularly in times and i've spoken about this a, a bit recently you know particularly in times where it's kind of become epidemic to have uh, what doctors are now calling computer neck which is you're you're looking over your computer and you're you're reaching forward with your chin and what that does is it puts a huge load on your neck and the you know the math on it is that if you extend your neck out at a 45 degree angle there is about it takes about 50 pounds of muscular force to support the 8 to 12 pounds of mass that you got there on 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 top of your body so uh it if you habitually have your neck craned forward you know even a little bit there is requires a lot of work from your neck muscles to to make that happen plus there's a tendency to kink the hose there at the jade pillow gate which then creates this dammed up effect and I noticed it myself going back like 30 years whenever I was getting these headaches all the time. And I finally figured out that it was, you know, that was what was causing me to uh, to get these headaches. And once I started to uh, adjust my head position, the headaches disappeared and have not come back. So uh, the headaches were just a cannon shot across my bow to say, hey, Rick, you know, you're doing something wrong here. You might want to might want to mend your ways so that we can proceed in an orderly fashion here at a, at a much, much better uh, state of being. And whenever I started to get that, I started to correct that. That's not to say that I don't have to make that adjustment every day, many times a day, because I do. It's something that... Uh, we gravity and habits tend to to pull down on the head and and so it requires an effort an intentional um decision to get your head on straight and if you don't make that decision then you're probably just going to slide into into that uh uh, uh, your default setting. So getting this, so the Shuling Ding Jin means that the crown of the head, and you've heard me talk about this many times, the crown of the head right here at the, at the hair, hair whirl is raising up. And so you notice that when you do that, it, the occiput, instead of angling back, it then moves toward vertical. And this is something that Cheng Man Ching really emphasized and said, like, you know, you have to get your occiput toward the vertical to allow the qi and the shen to rise. And what, what you'll notice is that the top of the head tends to kind of slope down a little bit whenever whenever you raise the, the occiput. Also the chin tucks in and that opens up that jade pillow gate and you get this the energy that has been built up in your body mind is a lot allowed to flow freely so what you're what you're not doing is 
forcing this, not saying, okay, I'm going to hold my head like this and keep it rigid. It's like, no, you just want to just gently ah, allow it to settle in so that you can feel the structural support that is built into the system. This is, it's, it's a structurally efficient to have your, your head vertical, have your occiput tending toward the vertical. And that's not to say that you're ever gonna get it really, really vertical because we all have different shaped heads. So don't, we're not talking about getting this absolute ideal. We're talking about just moving in that direction so that by lifting the crown, not not the top of the head, but the crown back here, you are getting the occiput more vertical and you're opening up that, that jade pillow gate. Consequently, this allows the spirit to rise. And a caution on this because there is so much um, energy that comes through when you do this, particularly whenever you get it. It takes a little bit to get it right, but when you get it right, it's like, oh, it's like it can it can hit you. I did, I was doing a, a class. Maria and I were doing a class uh, last Friday, and I I was introducing it to uh, to a group of you know fairly um, uh, new people, and and one guy who had had some spinal some disc fusion in his neck he did it and boom he he felt like a sack of potatoes on the uh, on the ground because so much came in that his blood pressure just dropped and he was like he uh, he, he 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 dropped down so we had to kind of set him secure him uh, on a bench and so he could you know stabilize his his stuff but so you have to be aware of too much because it is it is very nourishing and sometimes you can you can get too much too fast if you are not prepared for it you know your brain says oh we do not recognize this phenomenon we're going to shut down now and so you want to uh you want to build up to it and that luckily for most of us you do, you just do it and it has its own self-regulating system you you're not going to do it more than you want because it'll get uncomfortable. You'll get lightheaded if too much chi is going into your brain. And you build up to it gradually so that your brain can then understand this raised spirit and can adapt to that and say, oh, okay, I like this. I, I, I want, I like more liveliness i like more aliveness and uh and then it has this capacity to then nourish the the brain cells and it has a demonstrable effect on your your mental acumen your your endocrine system your your just your whole sense of vitality and and youthful vigor so that is the uh, the nickel version of what uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, before we go on, um, any questions or comments? All good. Okay. Full speed ahead. All right. All right. Here we go. So, we're, first we're going to do this just sitting down, and just so we can get used to the idea. So it's. We're really fine tuning the the uh, this Shu Ling Ding Jin. So that is, you want to get your head and tune into where it's doing you the most good. So you know, just get that idea. You know, that crown of the head back here. So put your hand there and. I just feel that even if you've done this a thousand times for me, just kind of just get that feeling there and then get down here and put your finger right there at that at that jade pillow gate where your your spine enters into your occiput. So just to clarify, 
occiput is this big bone right here at the uh, at the base of the skull. So, and first, just deliberately slack off and just kind of let your head kind of kind of hang as you know where it might want to go ordinarily. Just so, just kind of let it let it relax and 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 just kind of be there. Just just feel into that. And then very gently, very slowly, back to reach with the crown of the head and tuck in the chin and feel your neck elongating. Feel your occiput getting more vertical. And just notice the effect that has on your state of being, how it, the effect it has on your mind, on your just your energy, your feeling. You just get that. And then very gently lift your chin, not far, but just like a half inch or something, and just notice what that does. Now lower it. A half an inch and notice what that does. Notice, notice, lower it just a little bit more and notice what that does. Lift it and just feel. So this is a very subjective experience here. This is something, you know, we're talking about how you feel. This is your relationship with your body mind, your relationship with your chi. Now drop your chin and you're looking for the sweet spot. So up and down, just kind of do a little bottle head there very gently and just feel into that. And there's a, there's a sweet spot there, which just says, oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I like this. Just get that. Good. Now, we'll do the, uh, what, what we call the, the turkey head. That is, you're going to push your face forward. And just feel, I'll do it to the side here. So I'm pushing my face forward. And notice how that kinks the hose there. And it creates a, uh, and my my neck is an angle now, and now I'm going to drop it back, pull it back, and take it past the point where it feels comfortable. And really, just elongating the neck, and then push the face forward. So we're exploring the range of motion here, and pull it back. You can feel the muscles kind of stretching, the connective tissue elongating. You're creating space there in the neck. Now, find your sweet spot there. Go forward a little bit, and then back it up, and then forward a little bit. And you're looking for that place that it feels, feels right. You're still reaching with the crown. And just notice how it makes you feel to have your head on straight. And it's good to be able to compare it to other things, just so you have that, just so you'll notice whenever it's, it's off. Because once you start to move, you got to start this all over again. You got to start to make that adjustment again, because Things have changed. You have habits that have been building up over many decades that are cued by certain movements, certain body positions. And you'll automatically, I know I do, you know, particularly if I say I'm learning a, uh, a new form or something like that, I'm doing something I haven't done before, I'll have a tendency to stick my chin out 
It just it's something that is my pre-conscious thinks that that's a swell idea to do that. But then once I oh once I get a grip, I pull back and I say oh, it works better if I don't do that. This is where my my conscious mind has been able to learn some cool stuff so that I'm able to make corrections in my pre-conscious and over time it becomes easier and easier to make those first of all establish the awareness of when it's not working and second to be able to make a very quick and efficient change to to adjust that so we've got this now so we we have an idea now where the head wants to be and you get to explore this for decades. You don't you don't have to get it all in one shot. It's something that every time you go there, every time you consciously reach with the crown of the head, Shu Ling Ding Jin, you get this little burst of spirit. Shen is raising and it's animating your Niwan Gong, your Muddy Pill Palace, and it is creating new possibilities in your in your body mind, so much so that you actually start to create new life in your in your in your in your system. So it, you are more alive as you the more you explore this. You become more in present time because as the spirit rises and if it's done in a coherent way, then your whole system works together as a unit. So you have this sense of coherence that allows you to function at this much higher level. So let's uh, let's stand up and uh, we'll do some stuff with our uh, uh whilst ambulant. So one of the keys to uh, raising the spirit is to enhance the spirit of vitality, the Jing Shen. So the spirit is the Shen. The Jing Shen is this interface between the Jing, the your body essence, and the Shen, the spirit. So if we can raise the and make the Jing more coherent, then this allows more energy to feed into the brain. So let's go and let's begin with our, uh, um, our getting our three pillars in so that we have that as uh, we are able to generate more chi. We're accessing the big chi by getting our center equilibrium. So feel into the balls of your feet and knees are unlocked. Relax your lower back and drop your sacrum. We're sinking into our legs. We're releasing at the hip joints. So we have that sung kwa. Now reach with the crown of your head and tuck in the chin. Point your index fingers, feel that energetic coherence, reach with the elbows. Just feel the energy building up as we open to the big chi. So the yin chi of the earth is rising through your feet, through the bubbling well points in your ear and the center of your foot, and filling your body with that yin chi. And as you reach with the crown of your head, your Shu Ling Ding Jin, 
you are accessing the the yang chi of the heavens. Tucking into chin like that opens the jade pillow gate and allows the energy to circulate throughout the whole body and into your brain. So you're nourishing and cleansing your brain. You're removing stale energy and and possibly creating very positive physical effects. There's not enough research on it to say whether or not it's helping to clear out plaque and all the stuff that kind of inhibits your thinking as you get older, but the certainly the traditional wisdom points in that direction. So now as you reach with the crown of your head, I want you to imagine or even feel a spot right about here, about you know six inches above your the crown of your head. And there I want you to feel into or imagine a an insubstantial point right there, uh, an energy center which you are simultaneously hanging from, being suspended by this, and also reaching up to. So in other words, there's a two-way relationship here. You're not just passively hanging from it. You're also reaching with the crown of your head as you do this. So we have this, it's a participatory event here. So we're, you're engaging this, this point. Now, this is a location which in some traditions they describe it as a, 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 an extra body chakra. And so you can think of it as, as an energy center that is located just outside your body. And but notice what happens whenever you engage that. Notice what that does to your spirit, your Shen, as you do that. I know for me, it has a tendency to raise the spirit and expand it. It becomes quite luminous and uh, very filling. So I've, there's a, a, a quality of insubstantiality that permeates from that. So that is the yang chi of the heavens there that is filling and animating your body. And luckily we're grounded by the yin chi of the earth. So at the same time as you're doing this, you're feeling your feet, the balls of your feet, you're feeling the bubbling well points at the center of your foot. And you're feeling that very dense energy of the earth as you do this. So we're going to do a very simple exercise right now. And I want you to just as an exercise for raising the spirit of vitality, the first thing you do is you reach with the crown of the head. You tuck in the chin. So you're opening that jade pillow gate. You're establishing your shuling ding chin as your first order of business. And then you feel the balls of your feet and reach with your wrists. And Notice your chin if it wants to rise as your hands come up. And just override that old habit. You're reaching with the wrists. Now reach with the fingers. You just feel into that and just feel into that insubstantial quality that's filling you right now. Feel that 
lightness of being. Now reach down with your elbows, sink into your heels, and feel the yin as you sink down, down, down. Your hands come down. Yin, 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 more and more yin. You're sinking more and more. And then reach down with the fingers. You're still reaching with the crown of the head. And just notice the impulse to raise your chin as you do that. Let's do that again. Go into the balls of your feet. Set the knees. And reach with the crown, tuck in the chin, shu ling ding jin, and reach with the wrists. We're doing a very simple exercise here so we can really get the idea of establishing that principle. Reach with the fingers now as your first order of business here having that as your foundation. Eventually it'll become second nature to you and you won't have to spend as much conscious effort in doing it. But right now we wanna consciously feel that raised spirit. Now sink at your heels, reach down with your elbows, sink. And feel the energy going down, down, down as your the the yin quality is take center stage. You just feel into your body and just notice your state of awareness right now. Feel the expansiveness of your spirit. Okay, so now we're going to do something a little different. I want you to go to the balls of your feet. Establish your Shu Ling Ding Jin. And reach with your wrists. Very slowly and gently raising. Now reach forward with your fingers. And reach out and open. Feel that extension. Your arms going out and feel it between your shoulder blades. Feel it issuing from your spine to your shoulder blades, to your shoulders, to your elbows, your wrists, your fingers. And feel your spirit animating all these movements. Good. Now sink into your heels and now reach with your elbows, opening. You're still reaching with your fingers, reaching forward with your fingers, but you're also reaching out with your elbows, not pushing them with your shoulder muscles, but you're just reaching with the elbows as you come out and open, 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 and just feel the expansiveness of this. Hands come down. Sink into your heels. And turn your forearms so your palms are facing up. Check your head position. Feel, feel into the palms of your hands and notice you've got, there's a, an energy ball pushing down on your palms of your hands right now. You're generating a lot of of chi there coming out of the Lao Gong points in your hands. So you're getting this, this dense ball of energy there in the palms. Now sink into your left foot 
and step forward with your right foot. Feel into it, push your knee forward. And now reach with your finger, reach. You're reaching actually with your wrists. Just feel that as you extend forward. So your weight is about 70% in your right leg now as you reach forward. Rotate your palms. Sink into your the heel of your left foot. Sink into your left leg and press down. Step back with your right foot. And pause and feel into that. Reestablish your Shu Ling Ding Jin. Reaching with a crown. We're continuing to ramp up. We're continuing to raise that, raise the Shen. Let's do that again. To the balls of your feet. Set the knees. Reach with the wrists. Your arms are relaxed, hanging. Your fingers are hanging. You're reaching with a crown, tucking in the chin. Now reach with the fingers, wrists, elbows, shoulders, scapula, spine. Everything is opening as you reach forward. You're in the balls of your feet. Now stay in the balls of your feet. This time, reach out with your elbows. And open very slowly. Reach. Feel the hands kind of like you're pulling taffy as you want to pull them apart. Feel the resistance there. And you're opening, opening. Feel your Shu Ling Ding Jin. Feel the energy circulating throughout the whole system. Feel the spirit enlivening and enlightening each cell. Think of your heels as your hands come down. Palms up. You're reaching forward with your wrists, but your shoulders are very relaxed. Reaching down with the elbows, reaching up with the crown. Sink into your left leg. Pick up your right heel and then step forward with your right foot. Feel the ball of the right foot. Actually feel the heel of the right foot. Push your right knee forward. Now feel the ball of your right foot and reach, extend. Reaching with the wrists, the fingers, the elbows, the shoulders, the shoulder blades, the, the spine opening. Sink into the left heel. Rotate the palms. Hands come down. Step back with the right foot. Check your Shu Ling Ding Chin again. Sink into your heels. Allow the, the spiritual energy, the Jing Chen, to continue to rise, but also expand throughout the whole body mind. Feel the energy sinking down through your feet into the earth, cleansing and distributing. Step 
Step in. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Hands come up. Gather into the ball of your feet. And now sink into your heels as you disappear from the chi. Throwing it away. Dissolving into the emptiness. Letting go of all of that. Dissolving into the insubstantiality of the moment. Please have a seat. How'd that go? Not everybody all at once. Okay. <laughs> Sharon. <laughs> um, I appreciated the effortless feeling within with the movement right richard well i had uh two interesting things happen mm -hmm. one was that uh i feel as though i'm um at least an inch taller mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and the other thing is that I had an experience bringing my hands down where the energy from my two hands were start bumped into each other. So I never had that happen before. That was a little weird. <laughs> so what'd that feel like? It yeah, was that... it, it was a it really surprised me. It felt like um Let's see. Like if you actually had a ball in each hand and you the bump the balls into each other. So it was like bump, 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 oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like get out of I was getting in each other's way. <laughs> cool. But the feeling taller was really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm am, am any taller, but it's nice to think you are. Um, I, I think if you were to do this often, you would get taller. I think you're right. So. Well, there's a motivation for a short person. <laughs> <laughs> you did get taller, right? Right. What's that, Jonathan? I said you did get taller, isn't that? Right? I did. Yes, I I got taller. Yes, that's a, re that's a remarkable <laughs> piece yes, of information so. about. I, I'm. I, I mean, I'm taller, after, I'm taller now in my seventies yeah. than I was in my thirties. So, right for whatever that's worth, you know, <laughs> it's yeah by an inch, you know. So it's a uh, it's not not insignificant. Scott, you had something. Uh, <laughs> Valerie. Yeah, this Scott. No, uh, the other Scott. <clears throat> A lot of interesting things. And it's kind of hard to <clears throat> talk about it. Before you t started talking about the space above the top of the head, m my byway was just so there and it was it was 
not just here, but here. You know, it was thick. It was very not <clears throat> not thick, like really <clears throat> dense, but very um, very present. Uh, and I had I had this distinct impression because I pretty much when we do these things, I try to keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth. And I kept feeling like I was putting too much pressure and I'd check. I was like, no, my tongue isn't really pressing there. It was just very substantial. That that point became very substantial. Um, and I just wasn't taller. I was just bigger, just bigger. That's, that's the way I feel too. I feel I feel bigger. I feel like, oh, yeah. My 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 space gets gets very large when I do that. Um, I didn't have too much trouble keeping. I mean, now I am, but <laughs> when we were doing the exercise, you know, keeping the um, jade pillowcase open and the tongue or the chin dropped, that wasn't um, so hard, but. I still deal, I, I become very, very, very aware of the tension that I carry in my shoulders, particularly between my shoulder blades. I mean, I keep, I'm better at dropping than I probably have ever been in my life, but that tension still exists between the shoulder blades. Um, and, you know, I have those, those moments of where, ah, and then it's, mm, no, uh, we still got to. Um, but, uh, working on that and it, it's a good thing, right? It's a good thing to be very aware of something that, uh, I carry around all the time and, uh, just working on letting that go. Cause I don't need to carry the world on my, my shoulders, nor my back. Agreed. Agreed. That point that you're talking about between your shoulder, but there, there is a, uh, it's one of the, one of the energy gates that has to be opened, you know, to allow the energy to move freely. So it's great to have that awareness because it it's something that a lot of people have, you know, and, and so, you know, it's getting that, you know, it's, it's enough so that it's mentioned in, mentioned in the literature, you know, I forget the name of it exactly, but there is a, a spot there just opposite the heart that is uh, is one of the, one of those places that that it gets stuck and uh so uh, it's great to have that have that awareness and something to uh something to play with well maybe i'll see somebody in two or three weeks that can help work on that who knows yeah <laughs> precognition <laughs> <laughs> uh anybody else jonathan so there's a, a real dynamism that can come into it, or did anyway for me, when you're focused both on the head and the hands, the hands going down, the head going up, it's kind of felt like a rocket of right before it, you know, it, it goes to lift off all that energy that seems to build up and build up and build up and build up. And it's like, it's like you're always just about to lift off. So that, that dynamism is really cool. And it's kind of contrast to how inert the inertness of the body so much of the other time. Uh, but the, the, the whole body dynamism of this is very, very powerful. Simple as it is, I think it generates a lot more cool stuff than a lot more complicated forms, possibly. Or well, I should say, this without this, the others won't. And without this, the others won't work much at all, I guess, is also the point, right? You can be moving around without that full dynam dynamism that's being created by this this stretching and this this polar you know send, sending things in different vectors right that vector attention I, seems so I think the genius so the genius of this these uh, internal arts is that it still works it just works better <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing what you're saying yeah, yeah. so it, it the genius right. of it is that you can just go through go through the motions without any of this internal awareness and it's still going to do you a lot of good. Mm. So, uh, that is the, uh, the, the beauty, the wonder and the genius of it. But uh, to be able to 
have done enough of this so that you're able to compare, you know, what a rudimentary knowledge versus, uh, you know, the effect of having decades of experience and just be able to 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 know that there's more possible in your practice. And not only that, but the more you discover, the more there is to discover. So it's a, it's yeah. Christmas every day that you you know that you uh, that you if you're open to that that the uh, the new experience the curiosity of the moment it allows you that animated spirit keeps opening up Christmas gifts every time you every time you go there. Yes, very much so, Scott. So it was just, I just had to do constant adjustments. You what? I had to do constant adjustments. Not not more adjustments, but constant adjustments. And that the chin definitely kept going up. Um, so it was definitely a lot of that. But, uh, there was definitely also a lot to it. And uh, definitely a lot of peace for me. Mm. Yeah. There's a whole lot going on now. <laughs> it's it's oh, yeah. yeah, a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> it uh yeah, the, the beauty of it is also part of the genius is is it's not if I do this for 30 years and I will get something good. It's like no, every time I do this, even for you know two seconds i get something good and so it just it's constantly uh instant gratification <laughs> that one gets once you know that's what's going on if you don't know what's going on you say yeah i just just made me lightheaded then it's like okay that's not a positive outcome for a lot of people you know but if you know that that lightheadedness is not a bad thing. It's actually raising your spirit. Then it's like, oh, oh, okay. Well, let's let's do some more of that. Uh, so every time you do that, it's like, oh, there's another and another and another and another, and it just keeps building. So it's a that's a whole lot of fun. Great. Anybody else before we sign off? Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy birthday, Jonathan. Happy Thanksgiving, Thank everyone. Happy, Happy birthday, Valerie. Happy birthday, Valerie. Thank you. Happy birthday, Valerie. Happy birthday, Valerie. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jonathan and Valerie. Happy birthday to you. And many more. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Love you. Love you Bye -bye. too. Thank you.